Good Fed Day, everybody. Brock, how are you? I'm free. Hi, Kevin. Hugo, Arena. Marco, how are you? So, <clears throat> good Fed Day. Plunge Protection Team, better get busy. If you recall yesterday, <clears throat> and even before, earlier in the week, in fact, going back to, I think, uh, last week, um, where I was talking about I'd like to see one more high, uh, that was, you know, when we had this pullback in here, and we got it and pointed out all the glaring divergences at this high. Asked Steve yesterday if it could be a wave four triangle. It was not much of a breakout, but look at this glaring divergence here. You don't see it? Okay, there you go. This glaring divergence yesterday on a turnaround Tuesday. So um, I don't know. It could sound pretty pat. But uh, turn around, this happened on Tuesday. It did turn around. So if you put it together, it was a turnaround Tuesday. And the action got serious last night in Europe. So this was a swoon that we had. And uh, here we are back at this uh, 200 on the two hour. Been using the two hour a lot. Uh, looks pretty ugly. Uh, you look at the day, pretty ugly day, 3,800 is going to be important. And then 37 and a half, these lows are going to be important. Right? And what could be behind it? Could it be a strong dollar? Dollar trying to come out of here was my contention that this was just corrective. Gave some of the dollar bears hope. Still need to close, you know above 91 at least to really confirm it. But even Steve uh, was saying there's a possibility for this dollar squeeze to happen. <clears throat> and uh, I think it's underway. Euro never got through the line in the sand. Didn't even attack it. Up here at 122, this moving average has contained it. And uh, pound's been stronger, but it's giving up the ghost here. And we have the N uh, on the verge of perhaps breaking out here over 104. There's the line. Something like this. I'll do it from here. I don't care. Anyway, you get the idea. So we're right there on the end for a breakout. And maybe we're going to get uh, yields popping on the Fed here. We'll see. So it looks like it's coming out of this consolidation pattern right here. Some people be waiting for 104. Uh, Canada getting a nice lift. Uh, asked uh, Blake yesterday if he thought... It had bottomed, and this was a pretty shallow retrace here in Canada, looking pretty good. Had one down day here, and we're about to negate it, and back over 128. Looks like 130 could be the next stop. Um, Aussie also didn't break out. A uh, mentee of mine is calling this a descending triangle, you know, this flat bottom here. Uh, if that happens, it'll measure, I believe, 74-ish, uh, just a measured move on it. So here's your horizontal line. Let's do it right here. Okay, so we start breaking out, breaking down, and the moving average is there, too. Right around the 76.50, 76.60 level right there. 
that's going to measure 150, 140. So that would take it more like to 75. So we'll see what kind of effect uh, the Fed has. All I could say is uh, this looks pretty ugly after having this spike and rallying and you know, the, like I was saying all week, the difference between this week and last week is last week shorter term time frames were confirming the move. And when this swoosh happened, I didn't think that there would be a shot for a new high, but that was it yesterday. And not much, you know, it didn't stay over it, but it was enough for a stop hunt, took out this high for by about three handles. Uh, with this going on, uh, almost everything's weak. Gold still looks neutral to me. I drew a few speed lines in here just in case gold gets going up around 1880 and silver has a similar look of what would be a sell zone for me. And that would be above the 26 area right here. So we'll see if silver could hold and, and get it done. I have a great guest today, so stick around for Alejandro. And I think I've covered everything that I've, you know, wanted to cover this morning. Any questions? Dollar strong, Euro weak, S&P's weak. Canada looking good, and uh, I know that uh, Blake has been looking for this and trading USD Max on the long side, looking okay too. Canada a little bit stronger, closer to the recent highs, but risk off, right? Risk off means stronger USD Max, stronger USD CAD, and they're much stronger than the end, but. I don't know if I would be fading the end. This was a pretty orderly correction here. Maybe we're going to 106 or so, and here's your yields, and then I'm going to turn it over to Blake. Uh, the end's telling me that even, even though yields have come off, they've retraced back to you know psychological support and the breakout at one. You know, maybe it could, you know, go down another bit or so, but look at the momentum at the high before the correction. See that, 77. It was a little bit of a divergence, but way over 70. So I think we're gonna make a move in yields above this high. Uh, and that would tell me maybe we're not going to. Yes, sometimes, Jay. So that's it, that's what I see, everyone. Any questions for me? Peter Goodburn, you mean? Okay. I believe Peter's allowing for a bear market rally. Maybe back to 94, 95. Okay. Well, maybe that's a scenario. I mean, the bonds do have uh, not a bad look to them when you look at them on the uh, weekly TLT. Almost looks like they could have one more hurrah up here. Um, and that would happen with risk off. Hey, Dale, uh, uh, yeah. I'm going to be here. Um, I'm sorry. I can I can you can you hold up for about three minutes for me? Oh, sure, buddy. Thanks. I can hold up for three days. I have canned food and I have water, All right? Can everyone else hold up for a little bit? You, you too, Sinatra, you're prepped, you're a preppy. Uh, actually, well, you know, one thing that I, I have noticed is with the weakness in uh, S&Ps, oil's really not getting hammered, is it? The stores across the road. <laughs> Uh, one of my mentees, uh, one of my mentees said that there was a missile fired off over Saudi Arabia that I guess they shot down. 
And uh, anyone know about that? Hear about that uh, uh, ballistic missile over Saudi Arabia yesterday afternoon, I believe. Had no effect on the market. It depends. You could have a bear market in bonds and a bear market in the dollar. Uh, as of late, a strong dollar also mean would mean a you know flight to safety, which would uh, be you know buying the dollar and rates dropping. So, but I have seen times when the dollar is going down and rates are going up too. Till they get to a tipping point. I think that could start happening later in the year where we have the dollar going down and rates going up. Yeah. Peter, yeah, Peter's excellent. So, you know, crude's trying to top a little bit in here, but actually when you look at it, Compared to the S&Ps, it looks like a champion. So we'll see. Could play some catch up or mustard. Uh, VIX is threatening too. You know, Steve's been talking about the divergences in the VIX. VIX up pretty good today. Back over 29. You've got some a major breakout. It's failed from 29 a couple of times. Here's my speed line in the VIX. Comes up around 46. That's my look for a three up there. Any other questions? Bitcoin selling off too. Even uh, Bitcoin is a little bit susceptible to cash being raised. Here's Bitcoin. I got out of my EG longs for minus 18 yesterday. I thought it would hold 60. Looks like we're going to get a new, most likely a new low in EG. I tried it for a turnaround Tuesday trade. It didn't work. Looks like it wants a new low now. There we go. Sorry about that, Dale. That's okay. Literally impossible to get. Sometimes my my I have a uh, I have a few dogs. Oh yeah. And, oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're lucky. And yeah. It's uh, one's old and yeah. Yeah, one's old. Uh, the other one is just she's just very independent. So. Mm. I was just outside, like trying to coax her to go back inside. But I know if I don't, if I if I sit here and I start on the webinar and I'm in the office, then next thing I know, she'll you know after she's out there because it's kind of cold outside, she'll start barking probably five to ten minutes from now, and then wake up everybody in my house. So yeah. I, I, can't, I can't leave her did out you there. Get her in? Uh huh. Did you get her in? I did. It just you uh -huh. know it's like. Uh, you know, it's like I have yeah. to pull out treats and all sorts. Oh of yeah, it's bribery. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to tell people that I just took some of my um, uh, pound Aussie off. Um, I was just telling the chat room here, but I had to. I I I, I sold it right here anyway, because um, I've been long since uh, one seventy six, so that's like two hundred some pips. Nice. Uh, you want to show the uh, share the screen though, bro? Yeah, just I'm um, just typing. Hold on. Right okay. Here. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, here let me get over here. Sorry, sorry guys, I'm just trying to play a little catch up. So uh, um, uh, I was long the pound. Well, I'm still I'm still long um, the pound Aussie from. You know, I've talked a lot about this as being, you know, this is a multi-year trend line. Uh, I, I even tweeted it uh, a couple of weeks ago or maybe a week ago. Um, so you got you guys, even if you don't follow me, you know, just from the chat rooms, 
No, I've been long this since, you know, around here, this 176 level, you know, we're at 178 and change. I actually think we're going higher, but you know, when you get a move up into resistance, it, it makes sense to take a little bit of profits along the way, because especially like, uh, I mean, yesterday, you know, just give you a good example. Um, I was, you know, short the Aussie dollar. Um, I shorted it at, um, uh, my, my average was 17 or 15, you know, right here. And it, and it screamed all the way back up to uh, 7760 post CPI numbers. It started to come down. I'm like, okay, this is, you know, it's coming down because of, you know, expectations. Everybody knew that the Australia CPI was going to be strong because of New Zealand last week. So it started to come off and then obviously risk appetite started to, to wane a little bit. And, um, uh, when it slipped to uh, 77.12 <laughs> or uh, uh, 15 this morning, I took it off for a couple pip loss after holding it for, you know. So you know, I have sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, my timing's off, or I, I didn't, you know, I didn't trade it as good as I wanted it to. Like a lot of, a lot of the, there's a one of the traders in our chat room, JT. He sold uh, the Aussie, you know, up here at channel resistance. And frankly, you know, if you, if you use Forex analytics and even if you weren't in the chat room or you weren't trading with what I was, uh, uh, you know, saying that we're, we're, you know, right up against channel resistance, you know, following the CPIs, yes, CPI yesterday. So you knew we were, you know, up there. Um, and you know, if you queue off of it, then, you know, you made a little bit of money. So th there's, there, you know, the, I'm not always going to be the best trader or the, you know, and I definitely uh, screw trades up from time to time. So, um, but what I try to do is try to guide you guys, at least in the right direction. And that's, you know, that's the, that's the goal. Um, Cause we're not, we're not all going to be on the same page. We're not all going to be perfectly timing things, but if I can keep you in the, the, the correct general bias or general direction, you know, that's, that's the, that's the, the key there. So anyway, um, a lot of craziness happening over the, over the last couple of days with these stocks, huh, huh Dale? Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. GameStop, AMC, B Bed Bath and Beyond, Beyond Meat, uh, Dillard's. I mean, it's just insane. Uh, and you know, one of the things, if you don't understand why, uh, one of the reasons why equities are a little bit, uh, uh, um, you know, kind of, and you can see the post-market, I I was, uh, or pre-market, somebody said it was trading up at two, three something this morning. Let me, let me see if I can pull up. You know, I, I don't normally do this. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, and it doesn't take much. I saw a tweet yesterday, Blake, where... Elon Musk said he kind of likes Etsy. And I think that was before the opening, so I'm sure it flew. So, you know, some of these influencers, all they have to do is give a symbol and say they like it, and the whole world piles in. Yeah. And pretty amazing. Uh, I, I was wondering if Elon was long Etsy before he tweeted, I kind of like Etsy. So... Yeah, let's. Uh, we'll, we can take a look at it. this. Is GameStop? I wonder. I, I'm. 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 The, I'm the worst person for navigating Bloomberg. I really am. I'm. I'm like so. I'm. I'm really so much better at uh, uh, using other programs. But and and anybody that's used Bloomberg for an extended period of time knows what I'm talking about. It's like I am just like you know. It, it's a really difficult program to navigate. And I felt this way back in the '90s. I feel this way now, and and, and I know I don't use it to its uh, to its fullest expectations. But what I'm trying to find out is where is the? I mean, I do have obviously after um, markets, pre market, but I, I don't know if I, if I can chart plot it. But um, let's see what uh, Etsy is doing. Uh, there's delay. Uh, let's see, it's delayed. Is it delayed? Maybe it is delayed. No way. I don't know. Um, uh, let's. Arena saying just type in the ticker symbol. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I, but I wanted to see a chart of the post-market oh, okay. or pre-market activity is what I'm trying to look for. Yeah. Uh, here's Etsy right here. So, um, looks like pre-market were 198 to 200 offer. So, I mean, it's not, it's actually down pre-market. So, um, and this is over one year, so. But I, I, there, there's a lot of these stocks that are just absolutely, they've been flying, you know, uh, you know, the, the, let's take a look at um, AMC. I'm not sure what the symbol is, but I'll find out AMC entertainment holdings. That's gotta be it. So AMC, we got closed at five bucks pre-market 16. <laughs> yeah. So pre-market it's right here. I mean, that is nuts. That's, that's nuts, Dale. Yeah. It's ab absolutely crazy. I mean, you know, uh, I've never seen this before. I, I, you know, I was around in 2000. Um, and you had trends that just kept extending, but these, um, you know, dead soldiers coming back to life like this is something really I've never seen before. Yeah, I don't, that, that, that is, uh, that is actually something that's quite new. Like for, for example, um, when, uh, how I made my initial fortune was, uh, and if you guys never listened to the, um, the, uh, um, there's a, there's a video that was um, chat with traders and uh, Aaron from chat with traders. He did a long interview with me years ago uh, about, you know, how I was, you know, eating ramen noodles. And I was, you know, I, I, I levered up basically a, an internet stock called GoToNet. It was G N E T at the time. And uh, it was a stock that I owned. I mean, I owned a lot of shares. I owned like probably, uh, I forget. 10 or 12,000, 15,000 shares. I don't know. Stock was, because uh, it was so many years ago, it was 1997, 98, 99, 97, 97. Uh, anyway, I, I, bought, I bought the stock and I had like, you know, m multiple thousands of tens of thousands of shares, whatever. And the stock opened up like 50 points. And then it ran from like up 50 points to up 80. And then I, I was selling, dishing it out the whole way up. And I think I made like three quarter million dollars that day. Um, it, was a, it was a big day. And so uh, I, I've been in those types of situations, obviously. But this is like, yeah, you, like you said, Dale, stocks from the dead. I mean, yeah. you know. And wherever there's a, a fairly sizable short position, they're rating. So I'm sorry. Uh, and wherever there, you know, are sizable short positions, yes. they're That's rating correct. that those stocks. Well, let's uh, let's talk about things that we do we can really control because unless you guys are trading it, all it is is like all it is is more of eye candy and uh, you know wish I was there. And, you know, I'm, I'm not long any GameStop. I'm long uh, pound Aussie and I'm long, you know, Euro Aussie and uh, uh, Euro, uh, you know, um, Euro New Zealand and pound New Zealand. They're all up pretty good today. So I'm, you know, and those are the things that, and those are the things that we, you know, have control over. And, you know, I was long some dollar max. I let it go at uh, actually 2017 this morning. Um, not as big of a position as I wanted, but you know, you know, I try to carry a long position as we dip down here towards support. But uh, let's talk about you know where stocks are at, and let's we'll, we're going to start off with that. You can see where the S and P is probing. Once again, we're probing that uh, thirty eight hundred level in the S and P. That's important to know because as we probe into the support, if we break through the six one eight, which is thirty seven ninety four, I think the market will then you're going to be seeing. Um, Let's say 3794. This is going to be key because that's the 618 retracement. If we break below that, then we are going to be down towards, uh, I, my opinion is we're going to be challenging channel support. But, you know, obviously there's levels of support below that that we're going to have to see. Um, resistance intraday, you know, 38, I mean, I'll, I'll write down 3870. You know, you can see it right here, but, you know, even, even from a double top perspective, 
you know, just a, just a, I'm sorry, I should say, say, let me say that differently. A double top objective, you know, we're talking a move down to 37 and a quarter here. So think about that guys, you know, if we start really breaking down, okay? Uh, so let me write that down, 37, 38. And remember after, um, uh, and let me, let me say this. Um, oh, and I, I should probably do this. Okay, starting on Monday, um, in order to listen to the bias chart analysis, this analysis that we're going through, you're gonna to have to be a Forex Analytics uh, member, at least the, um, at least the- uh, Light version. Light version, yeah, which is only $19 a month. Plus you get an app and you get to listen to all the webinars, you get all the analysis that we do on Forex Analytics. And obviously if you're a premium member, then I'll see you in the chat rooms and you, know, you can read all the Elliott Wave and Harmonic analysis as well. But um, but I, I'm I'm going to go through this with you because it's very important, especially as we go into a probably a higher period of volatility time. It's going to be important to know exactly where all your levels are at that you need to be focused on. So the euro dollar. Notice where we held a support. I actually just one of the things that I did just as I was you know getting my dog to come in, and I, I actually picked up some euro below. Uh, 12110 and I sold it at 16 just as I started this webinar. Just a little quick scalp because I know uh, I, I bought it here at 10, sold it at 16 because I knew we were at the 618 retracement. This is going to be really key support today. I'm going to write down 121 is key. And below that would be 12050. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to be able to leave that asterisk there. I don't think. Uh, Move it, but that's going to be pretty key for today. Okay. Uh, resistance 122, I think. I actually will, it should be 122, but we'll probably mark up this uh, spike high here at 121.75. Be back in a couple minutes, Blake. All right. Sounds good. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be wrapping up this stuff here. Um, I'm trying to recover for um, having to go an extra three minutes. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get some oxygen. What's that? I'm trying to recover from having to go an extra three minutes on the intro. <laughs> All, right, All, right. All right, buddy. I got I got the joke. If I, if I, I got it. All right. Um, let's go over to the cable. So the cable, once again, we're challenging the ascending wedge resistance. But more importantly, it's a 78% retracement on a daily basis and weekly basis. So it's a 78% retracement of the 2018 high to the low. That's why it's so key. And if, if you guys haven't seen that and you're just now seeing it, you know, we've been marking up the last, you know, couple of weeks, 137.55. It is very, very important resistance. Uh, if we break it, which, but just so you know, I think we're going to eventually break it because we are above the multi-year trend line here, um, you know, and it, it's a descending wedge. So it's a bullish breakout in the cable. So I think it's eventually going higher. That doesn't mean we can't, you know, slump to 134 before we make a move higher. You know, it, and, and, and we could be in this ascending wedge and break back down first before moving higher. So, you know, be aware of that. Um, support right now. 136, let's just call it 136.50. Okay. Aussie dollar. Channel resistance. One, uh, 77.70 is key. That is key resistance that bears want to hold and bulls want to break right there. Okay. Support. 76.30, we break through that and it's gonna get kind of ugly for the Aussie. Um, you know, a breakdown of, of the this, excuse me really quick. Uh, did, I miss, did that happen? It didn't happen. Yeah. There we go. Um, 
the uh, a break of 7630 is when i start to get really aggressive some of these aussie sh sh cross rate shorts that's that's you know on a break back below here that's that's it so I'm just letting you guys know 7630 or 40 it's actually 40 it's really 40 kiwi Kiwi had a key rejection as well. And um, yesterday, if you're using Forex analytics, just give you an example. The daily analysis last night um, is, you know, hey, yeah, I know we're up against resistance here, um, but this is a triangle that's forming. So if, if you were looking at that, you were, you know, not suckered into buying the 618 retracement. So now if we get above 70, 72.50, that would be bullish. Um, and, and just so you guys know, if you, you know, are using Forex analytics, the basic technical analysis tab, which is the middle tab on all of these instruments that we follow, that's written by me every night. And then I also post a lot of the intraday updates myself, Paul Franco, Amanda, um, you know, Steve does sometimes. Uh, obviously, the rest of the team is contributing to other things. I just wanted to tell you, though, that the end of day analysis is my thoughts at the end of the day for basic technical analysis. I want you to know that because if you're using Forex analytics, you kind of know where I stand on certain instruments or, or on all these instruments on a daily basis, you know, in case, you know, I'm you know, stepped away from the chat room or whatever. Support for the Kiwi is going to be right here at 71.50. I know we wrote that down yesterday and we probably really need to be more aware of 71.30, but I'm going to write down 71.50 for intraday. Dollar Canadian, we're coming right into pretty key resistance here. So if you're, you know, I, I think we can just do this. 127.75, more importantly is 127.80. We break that, you know, uh, we're probably gonna flip from range to bullish in, you know, until we can get back up towards resistance up here. Okay, 50% retracements holding at 126.85. Okay. You notice everything's range bound. Swissy, inverted head and shoulder pattern still developing. Actually, Andre just posted a bunch of stuff on the Swissy uh, here. Uh, if this is our chat room, guys, you want to know how active our chat room is? Um, I got up two hours ago. I'm still posting. Okay, so you, you guys can kind of get the picture. This is uh, the last two hours. Somewhere around here where I got up. This is how much chatting goes on in our chat rooms, just to give you an example. The reason why I wanted to bring this up is because if you look at Dollar Swiss and Andre's uh, count here, that he posted that in the chat room this morning, you know, Andre's looking for, you know, we got the inverted head and shoulder pattern. You know, he's looking for a move back towards basically the breakdown point, which would be, you know, up here on an intraday basis. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Resistance, 89.20, five. Uh, support is going to be 88. 50 again because i don't know if we're going to make it back down towards the uh support there this is key because if that breaks then we flip to bullish pretty quickly so us dollar norwegian chrono look at the test right now you guys know this is a key key look 
if you guys are bearish, if you guys are bearish, the US dollar Norwegian chrono, you should short it here. If you are. Right. I know Steve's bearish. Steve, if you're bearish, US dollar Norwegian chrono, this is where you should add. Technically. I don't I'm not saying that you you uh, should. Uh, this is or, actually what I'm I'm gonna be taking half profits if we break above here, not adding. Oh, Okay, so th so there you go. So this that's what Steve's thinking. But if you are a US dollar Norwegian krona bear and you are like dead set, like it is going a lot lower, this is where you should be shorting. This is previous support long term from September. We already rejected it once. There's channel resistance, trend line resistance just above at 870. Short it here if you're a bear. Now, as Steve just pointed out, He's like, hey, I'm I'm going to cover half if we break above that. Look, it, if Steve's thinking it, probably bigger institutional guys are probably thinking it too. So um, I'm going to write down 865 and then 870. And I'm going to put a couple asterisks there because if that breaks, it will flip to bullish. Uh, support 850. Remember, it is FOMC day, and if you don't think we can we can extend back down there, you're wrong. It's it's a Fed day. Uh, the dollar Mexican peso. We were looking for a retest of this trend line. Let me see. This is if you go back. All right. We basically retest that trend line. I got long yesterday at 1995 and I sold it at 2000, uh, uh, 2000, uh, 2000, 2003. And then I rebought overnight and, you know, below 20 and just a small position, uh, nothing to write home about, but that's how I'm playing it is off of that support. And uh, if you were in the chat rooms yesterday, you knew that 2030 is going to be resistance support is right now i would say is anywhere near 20 so that's resistance that flips us to bullish on a break okay dollar yen ripping this morning Again, dollar yen is one of those that I'm just really not dealing with. Uh, we are above 104, so we actually cleared this trend line that we were talking about yesterday. Remember, because yesterday I was like, okay, resistance is gonna be at 104. All right. Now we broke above that trend line, so we might be able to get back up to 104.40, uh, which is major trend line resistance. Graga has a winning pip on that. Nice, that's good. Uh, he's, 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 Trading well, coming back off of his uh, uh, surgery. So one hundred and three thirty. What's he doing the 40, 40 yard dash now? <laughs> I have no idea. I've got he in his uh, wheelchair. Four or five. Sure. Yeah. Just kidding. Uh, you know, here we're we're right up against a ninety sixty level resistance. Remember, this is a six one eight. Guys, if we break that, we're probably heading to 91. So just remember that from yesterday. 90, 60. Uh, remember, we're still range bound. Notice that everything's in range. Uh, where's my goal? So we had this inverted head and shoulder pattern developing. If you guys don't remember, um, you know, this is the shoulder. This is the other shoulder. The head. Well, triangle's breaking lower. So we're probably heading back down to 1820 today. And I'm going to write down 1800 as being really key support. That's a spike low. That shouldn't break. And if that breaks, Gold bulls are going to have a tough couple weeks, in my opinion. Uh, resistance is 1875. 
and we are range bound. And this is ahead of the FOMC. I, you know, that's just the way it is, guys, right now. So there's the bias chart. Um, Stelios, you can go ahead and take a screenshot of that. And good morning, Steve Stelios. How are you guys doing today? Good morning. Morning, Blake. Morning, guys. Um, so what's up? What's happening? Uh, what's I mean, how crazy are these stocks? I mean, isn't this just like wild? It's wild that 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 billionaires can throw what around their weight and move the markets like that. Isn't that crazy? Mm, they, in essence, they opened the door to that when the uh, at four thirty-five we have guaranteed funding tweet from Elon Musk went unpunished, if you're asking me. Oh, for 420 funding secured. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one. Yeah, that should have been, yeah, that should have been punished properly. Yeah. So, like Jack but, says, it's criminal and I think he's right. Yeah, but, you know, the, this this market now is, uh, you know, I, I actually, I actually like to see all the wheels one by one going off the bus. Because I think that's the only way that eventually we're going to reach the point that the situation is going to be so ridiculous that they will be forced to do something about it. You know what I mean? You know, um, uh, Peter Goodburn made a, um, excuse me, Peter Bookvar, when I, you know, I was talking about how there's a housing shortage here in the U.S. And he, you could tell he was a little agitated, you know, and he goes, yeah, so how can the Fed justify continuing to buy MBSs? You know, because that's adding to it because of low rate, low rates has made it more affordable for people to buy, and now there's no inventory. So even when it comes to, you know, housing, they're, you know, they're creating this type of, I mean, ask Blake. Yeah, of course, of course sale, that's, that's a rhetorical question from Peter because, uh, you know, P Peter is very good and he knows exactly what the problems are. The, prob the main problem is that uh, the Fed is cornered because the only thing that keeps this uh, facade that, you know, there is an actual economy that's working is asset valuations and nothing else. So, irrespective of the costs, they will do anything needed, and irrespective of the uh, negative side effects and the spillover uh, costs, they will do anything that's needed to support that. So, as you understand, step by step, the cost to pay to do that becomes even bigger, and the moral hazard also becomes even bigger. Of course, at some point, you know, that will come to an end. I have no idea what the uh, pin that will prick the bubble is going to be, but at some point it will happen. And when it does, it's going to be very, very, very ugly. But on the other hand... I guess hand, it yields eventually. It's a good guess. That's it is a guess. good guess that's going to be yields, but I don't think the problem is going to start by markets that the Fed fully controls. I think that, th that, that the route is going to start by markets that the Fed doesn't fully control. And then the market is going to wake up to the reality that the rest of the markets seem to be orderly just because there is a single buyer. Yeah. Uh, Peter doesn't believe that they can maintain control of the long end, only the short end. All right, guys. Well, hey, um, anyway. Well, uh, well, well. Well, you guys have been chatting. I've been yeah. giving you guys some You've been making sauce, money. Uh, trades over there. So um, I'm, I'm going to, I got to get over to my office. So I just want to say good luck, everybody, uh, with Thank FOMC. You, uh, and don't forget that um, we still have the pricing uh, special going, but it is going to be disappearing. It was supposed to be gone two days ago. We're leaving it up through the remainder of the week. Um, because we are changing the format of the face webinar. It'll still start at the same time. Just remember, we're gonna be doing the bias chart uh, at the at, at basically at nine o'clock Eastern every day. So I can answer questions and go through like more detailed analysis on the majors. All right, guys, um, I'm, I'm out of here. Good luck, everybody. Yeah. And bye bye. I hope, you don't, I hope you don't hit any major traffic on your way to the office. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> hey, from what I understand, like uh, uh, like AWS was down yesterday. All sorts of uh, technology issues. So yeah, yeah. They, yeah. you know, people uh, have ideas. anyway. Yeah, have a nice ride to the office, buddy. Thanks, man. All right, see all you right. Guys. Thanks, Blake. Bye, bye, Blake. So yeah, Peace crazy markets. I had the, I had two friends who are not traders calling me this morning saying, "Look, all these people are making so much money on cryptos and uh, GameStop, and all. what do we buy to make money?" I'm like, "Yeah, okay, uh, don't gamble, you know." But yeah, uh, that that's usually the last the yeah. last part of the bubble when uh, Uncle Joe and Aunt Mary that you know don't even can't even give you a definition of what the stock market is. Yeah. You know, they start wondering, oh, you know, is this something we should be doing it's, to become it's, it's rich? Like, there? It's like my mother, the other day I was discussing with my father some of my, our trades and she goes, I want to, I want a part of this, but only the winning trades. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> nice one. <laughs> nice one, mom. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, what have we got today? C count me in as well, by the way, Stelio. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm up for that as well. <laughs> I'd like yeah, to yeah. get in there, fun. <laughs> yeah. um, so we have the fed today and frankly i mean at this point in time i don't see what the fed can say that's going to be different to the last months uh, anything you know anything other than dovish would be a big surprise and i don't think the market's waiting or ready for anything like that but i don't think it's happening anyway yeah um, so let, let's see what they give us but i think it's going to be another snooze fest um, markets Probably, have been yes. crazy. Equity markets, we know, we can, we've seen what's happening, and it's just you know the, the most shorted stocks like GameStop and Dillard's and that they just explode. Are the ones and, that perform better? Of course, of course, and you know this happens over and over again. It's it cycles. Um, but other than that, it's been. I, uh, I don't remember who some, somebody wrote yesterday on Twitter. I found that ama amazingly funny. Uh, the the sad part is that it's actually real. He said, like, just make a, you know, IPO a company that's going to own, you know, a portfolio of only the most shorted stocks and retire. Yeah, yeah, that was like the a way stack. markets work now. Yeah, it work. Yeah. You know, yeah. guys, uh, I I think that Paul's going to once again emphasize the importance of uh, fiscal stimulus. And, you know, to try and, you know, talk to Congress about going with Biden. Uh, Bookfire didn't think uh, Biden would get the $1.9 trillion. But Powell, every time, you know, it, it's like he is saying, you know, uh, it's almost hat in hand, which is different than I've seen from a Fed um, chairman for a long time where, you know, uh, I, I can't remember them saying how much they need. Let's, government let's start to, by to reminding act. the obvious that that's illegal. Which, of course, doesn't mean anything anymore, right? What, what's Be legal? It's illegal. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's beyond and above and completely contrary. To the to Fed's the mandate? Yes. Oh, okay. You mean Absolutely. The, asking Congress to act is an illegal act? In First itself. of all, interfering in the fiscal uh, part is, uh, in any way, is completely out of their mandate, A. Okay. Yeah. B, what's even funnier is that since there are no other buyers but them, it's really funny having the Federal Reserve, which supposed, supposedly, you know, its mandate is price stability, etc., in essence, asking the government to give them bonds to monetize. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that bond monetiz uh, um, debt monetization is illegal is not, in essence, my words, is being proven by the fact that Bernanke himself, 12 years ago, denied that they're doing so in front of Congress, knowing that that's something they cannot do, right? Okay. And now yeah, we have the Fed, in essence, that says give us more debt to monetize it was temporary you can't wait for them mm. you know we can't expect them to to yeah. unwind it within 12 years it's temporary it needs more time yeah of course <laughs> of course there might have been some foolish enough to believe that a four trillion um uh um a four trillion balance it could be unwound back to 
what was it, 900 billion before the 2008 yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fed intervention started. But I'm pretty sure that there is going to be nobody left when a 10 trillion uh, balance it, because I've said it before and I'll reiterate my opinion. I believe that the Fed is going to have a balance sheet of roughly 10 trillion by the end of this year. Uh, I don't think that there's going to be anybody left believing that they can unwind 10 trillion back to 900 billion or whatever, right? Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, there, uh, there's no way that's going to get unwound. I mean, realistically, no way. Okay, uh, what else uh, to say? We had some numbers for people who care about numbers. Um, Australian CPI came in at 0.9% versus 0.7 expected, so it beat a little bit, but really nothing uh, major. We had US core durable goods orders roughly in line. Again, nothing major. Um, uh, two interesting things. Germany, they cut their um, 2021 growth forecast from 4.4% to 3%, and they now see that they should be going back to pre-COVID uh, GDP levels uh, in sometime in 2022, mid-2022, and that was... Uh, yeah, okay. We're saying it was going to be earlier. I'm, I'm mine at mid-2022 and bid on, you know, uh, but anyway... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we, we've seen this game before, you remember, post-financial crisis. Yes, yes, yes. With, uh, you know, it reminds me of um, um, uh, the dot plot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, ho the hockey stick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, you know, this is what they're saying. Uh, uh, Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, also made some um, uh, comments and basically he said that uh, there's not enough data to say when they can lift the restrictions. And he said he hopes that uh, school kids are going to go back to school in early March. Um, Amanda said straight away, I highly doubt that. And I think I'm, yeah. I agree with her, unfortunately. Same and here. The UK are also imposing 10-day quarantines on arrival from certain COVID hotspots. So, you know, unfortunately, the situation remains and, you know, lockdowns coming on and off and countries trying to escape lockdown and trying to go back to normality. I think we can all agree this is going to take some time. And the uh, initial optimistic uh, scenarios... Uh, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be um, uh, manifesting themselves. But, you know, eventually with the, uh, with the vaccines and everything, we've said this before, we should go back to normality. But the hope is that the effects in unemployment and, uh, you know, job losses and the uh, company shutting down are not permanent or at least uh, as little uh, as they can be permanent. Um, but, yeah, you know, uh, not, not great news um, anywhere. But overall, nothing's changed in the big picture. Uh, nothing new yet, so we wait for the FOMC tonight, and uh, hopefully we might might have something to talk about tomorrow. Pretty sure he's going to get softball questions, uh, <laughs> Powell, yeah. because it, it is more than obvious that the vast majority of reporters that go there, you know, they have to first be approved. I mean, it's either that, or, or they're like retarded, literally retarded, because you you know there are so many hot topics that you can open conversation with and in some miraculous way, like nobody touches them. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know what to say, but you are right. You know, they're yeah, not making Steve, tough questions. Can you work on telling us how you really feel about things? <laughs> anyway, yeah. I was still thinking about my hockey, uh, the hockey stick. I loved my hockey stick. It was a Northwood and, I always dreamed of being Bobby Hull and hitting a slap shot like him. Anyway, hockey was on my mind. But, yeah, Steve, you know, uh, I'd love to get you in the room with Paul. Uh, yeah. It'd be, um, uh, it'd be great. Yeah, probably he wouldn't be answering the vast majority of the questions. Or, you know, it's what politicians do when they get the tough questions. They, they give answers that are completely unrelated. I can so, you know, kind of see him pulling his hair and then running out of the room. Yeah, you ask After a tough question, and you. then they start answering about something like totally different, like they never heard the question. That's that's probably what would happen, even if they let reporters actually, you know, ask, uh, you know, proper questions um, yeah. uh, to them. Uh, in case though somebody does ask him, because it is a question that on occasion comes up, and they give the standard answer like, "What do you think about like stock market conditions? Do you think you know?" 
things are holding up, etc. <laughs> you know, following the last few days of craziness, um, I'm curious about to see... the penny stock volume, which yeah. you know is a graveyard for investors. Yes, yes. Uh, normally, you know. Because... Yes, yesterday, yesterday, yeah. GameStop had um, more volume than all the funds combined. Just to give you an idea. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm curious to see if if he's going to give like the standard answer or something else. I believe he's going to give the standard answer because the last Fed chairman, chairwoman actually, that at some point had hinted that valuations are a little bit rich. I remind you, was Yellen, you know, rather closer to the start of her tenure. Um, oh yeah, she thought biotechs were overvalued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Named yeah. a sector. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and and the market didn't really like it, and I think that's going to be the last time that you know they're going to comment like that. As always, uh, you know, um, even like a day before a bubble bursts, they're going to act like nothing is happening, and you know they're, they're not seeing anything. It's contained. Yeah, it's everything is contained, and you know it's uh, you know uh, the market is like healthy and everything else, blah 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 blah. All Anyhow, right, buddy, you have about four minutes to answer some technical questions. Yeah, DXY, you know. Uh, let me give the let me give the reversal scenarios because I'm going to take just 10 seconds to reiterate that we seem to be having a reversal once again today, but it's not a reversal until we close the day and we can confirm, right? Because if you remember, people fell on that trap a couple of days ago, trading days ago. I mean, at the end of last week. Uh, sorry, it was Monday. Um, so if we assume that we do have a very negative day for stocks today, and we do break down, for example, below this S&P uh, wedge. It's a big if. Then we can start talking about finally some type of a retracement lower, which would open the door for a move towards 3590 in the case of stocks. In the case of the DXY, that would probably translate to something like an inverted head and shoulder scenario playing out here with a neckline being roughly at 91. You can see it here. We've already broken out of a wedge. Um, but, you know, it's all about what type of a corrective move we had here. Somebody can see potentially an inverted head and shoulder scenario. Yeah. Shoulder, head, shoulder, right? 91 being the neckline. So in that case, we should see that type of a move playing out. In that type of a case, we should, we should see Aussie breaking down from this uh, triangle instead of breaking higher, right? We should see the Kiwi breaking down from this potential bull flag and just, you know, um, not being a bull flag and being something different. We've already seen the Euro, which, to be honest, is not that risk sensitive. I remind you that the Euro started moving lower a lot before uh, stocks even you know, bother doing anything and, and they, they still haven't done anything. But in any case, the euro seems to be trying to break down from a, like a bear flag. So the euro is in any case looking like it's kind of heavy in the short term. Um, in that case, we should see USD knock uh, finally producing like a bigger rebound higher, uh, in which case I'm going to be taking profits 50% uh, as I was saying and you know, we'll wait to add. Clearly, we're going to see USD card, which is trying to break out from this uh, descending trend line resistance. We're going to see it move higher with the first area of resistance being at 130. Um, we are going to be seeing uh, instruments that are risk, risk sensitive, like USD MXN. Look at this. USD MXN today trying to break up back within this previous channels uh, territory, we're going to see it move to the upside. We're going to be seeing uh, some of the crosses, Eurozi, Euro Kiwi, Poundozi, which is actually, as we speak, Poundozi is breaking higher from a descending uh, trend line resistance, and Pound Kiwi, Okay, we're going to see those accelerate higher as well. To be honest, Pound Kiwi, if you remember, we had this conversation with Stelios as well a few days ago. I said, be careful, a retest of these broken channels. Trendline support might act as resistance. It did. 
So we got a nice rejection from there, but adding to this, uh, the rejection did not lead to an impulsive move lower. Uh, it looks more like some type of a bull flag. So in case we get risk off, uh, I think the next time we revisit this trend line resistance, if we are under a risk of conditions, I think we're just going to slice through it. Okay. So, uh, you know, you should be careful, um, especially given the fact that in the case of pound Q specifically, uh, that will be happening following a major breakdown from a multi-year formation, right? This is like a four and a half year formation that we broke down from. So, you know, imagine the consequences of a false breakdown from a four and a half year um, old um, technical formation. So, Huge. yeah, so these are the things, um, you know, I, I would be paying attention in case we confirm today that something is up. As I've said multiple times before, if that's the case and when we start doing that, I expect the move to be sharp, but not very long lived. I mean, I expect it to last a few days to a couple of weeks. But within that period of time, there is a very good chance that we're going to see a very, very decent move. And here is Copper, uh, Dale, since you were asking about it yesterday. We're out of this ascending wedge. If we actually accelerate lower, somebody can even make the case here that after breaking through the wedge, what we did here is that, in essence, we no, formed... we're breaking the triangle. Yeah, all head and shoulders. Yeah, right. It's not very yeah. beautiful, but no, right. Yeah, the whole board looks like a cell, except the dollar. Anyway, so, you know that's what. Yeah, happened. so you know. Anyway, we're a couple been, minutes. Go ahead. Wrap we've it been up. we've we've been warning about things clearly losing momentum, right? Yes. Um, we've also been warning people not to try to jump the gun because you can get a lot of false starts. Uh, so in my opinion, just don't start selling everything intraday to day. I mean, at least wait for the day to close and, you know, confirm that, yes, this is actually going to be a very bearish day because we started on Monday at the, at the mid of the day, people thought that, you know, Everything's the world collapsing. Was coming to an end. Yeah, the, and the yeah, the, and the cam, yeah, the world is 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 coming down and tumbling down, and you know the sky is going to fall <laughs> on our heads, as Asterix, um, uh, Asterix was saying. Um, uh, but uh, I, I think we should at least wait for a daily close. So that's it from me. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Ale Dave. Alejandro. Really looking forward to having a conversation with you and meeting you. I want to thank you in advance for taking time out of your day to be with us. It's your first time here in FACE. Welcome to FACE, Alejandro. Or could I just call you Alex, buddy? Have you been in Zoom before? I'm asking you to unmute. Hey, can you can you hear me now? Have you? Yes. Awesome. Nice nice to meet you, Alejandro. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Uh yeah, yes, yeah, so I used Zoom before a couple of times. Uh, okay. But I didn't have right. to into that button. <laughs> so you're going to probably want to share your screen, you know, it's a yeah. green box. I'll do that. Um, and here. we can get underway. And while you're doing that, I, sh Alejandro, I want you. I'm oh, I just, uh, I just realized we have. Hi, Alejandro. You were mm -hmm. at uh, FXCM at some point, right? Yeah, that's right. I, I joined FXCM in 2009. And uh, yes, and you, you are from message. the. You work in the UK, if I remember right. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's right. So I. Yes, I Alex. Uh, Alex is a very good uh, uh, trader. And, uh, analyst and trader, actually, yes. Nice yeah. to have you. And I see, see you so much. I find everybody, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. So I was with FXEM actually from 2009 to 2016. And uh, I used to do various things like also on daily effects, you know, webinars. Right. Yes. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm quite amazed. Well, you like you used to have a soft, cushy life. What do yeah. you have to do now? <laughs> work? <laughs> <laughs> no, I work anyway, a lot. I'm kidding you. <laughs> I'm, I'm I still kidding. work a lot. Actually, I'll take that back. You know, when you get more senior within, especially within like the brokerage industry, you you, you do work slightly less, uh, which is nice. So oh, there's like end of I was time. just guessing. <laughs> All right, thank you for the confession. But you know what, Alex, I want to take you back even before those days and cool. uh, tell, you know, not back to, you know, grade school or anything, but yeah. what were your aspirations uh, when you were younger and how did you end up in this? So uh, when I was like uh, 18, 19, actually when I was 15 already, uh, I was into music and things like that. Uh, yeah. I was I was born in Sweden, by the way, um, and uh, over there I was with music. So I wanted to get into that, and I wanted to study economics, or sorry, business and music. So I started with that actually at university in my first year. Uh, but then in Sweden, everybody needs to do like uh, uh, this, like a conscript service. Like you need to do like oh. uh, yeah, you okay. need to. So you need to do yeah. like uh, military basic training. Yeah, like Israel, a lot of countries have it. It's, you know, part of uh, your Yeah, we have it in Greece. So anyhow, the story is already interesting to me because you're not a Swedish looking guy, clearly. No, you I'm were, not. <laughs> you, were born, you were born in Sweden and you managed to live a, a country that has these type of girls. I mean, I, I went there for my bachelor party and I almost never returned to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. I feel you. No, it's the <laughs> wife to be bought him the ticket to go there and she was hoping he wouldn't come back. <laughs> Okay, he won't. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't talk about that. Side and and, of the, and the fun part is that Swedish girls are so you know are so used to like um, you know tall, blonde, um, like um, you know excellent looking guys, and you know they like exotic. So I'm pretty sure Alejandro would had would would have you know. <laughs> And good luck there. <laughs> no, but it's it's true, you know. It's it's. I know, true. I know. <laughs> like I, you know, when I go to when I go to because my parents are from Chile, South America, mm -hmm. and uh, you know when I go and visit there when I was younger, you know, I'm married now, I have kids and everything, so obviously off the market. But when I was going back before, like I looked like everybody else, you know. So there was the people giving me no attention <laughs> whatsoever. Only when I start to speak, they say like, "Oh, you you sound like a gringo." I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but then that's it. Uh, no, but yes, it's, 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 it's a different market over there, if we can say so, in Sweden. And I uh, recommend everybody to check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Stockholm clubs, just do it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, so after military conscript, uh, like when I finished that, uh, you, you know, I had like a couple of months at home before going back to university. And my mother said, like, you're not going to just stay at home because I was like 19, 20 at the time. You're not just going to stay home doing nothing for the whole summer. You need to get yourself a job. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, so I just put an advert on. Uh, I saw some, an advertising like, uh, and I didn't know it was like a brokerage. I had really didn't know nothing about uh, the financial industry at that time. And I didn't right. think they were going to accept my application for that sales role, uh, but they did. Uh, and uh, there was a guy there, like the owner of the company. He used to work for Man Financial uh, okay. in London. And he set up his own brokerage in, uh, in, in Sweden, in Gothenburg. So every morning we had like, um, like a market update. We were talking about, you know, what's happening in the market, what's uh -huh. happening with non-farm payrolls. And this is in 2005, so 15 years ago. Okay. And uh, from there, I uh, started to sort of connect, uh, you know, news um, with price action. Right. And uh, when I left uh, that company one year later in 2006 to return to university, I, I changed and started to uh, study economics. So I continued studying economics and business and uh, I completed my three years. And then I went to a Swedish investment bank for a summer internship. Uh, and I was like a fixed income and FX dealer. Huh. So we're dealing with uh, Swedish bonds and uh, Swedish right. Uh, the Norwegian kroner, uh, sorry, right. Swedish kroner, uh, and, and things like that. Uh, but then after that, I went to London, did my master's in economics, and I graduated in 2009. Huh. And it was the middle of the recession. Right. And uh, when I was at the Swedish bank, I actually spoke with a guy from Citibank. And he's like, yeah, yeah, when you come to London, I'm going to give you a job, whatever. Because I was already then trading my own account. 
and I did some back testing with uh, Pro Real Time. If you remember that software? Uh, no, I, no. My Pro life Real is my life is my back test. <laughs> okay, yeah. There's a Pro Real Time anyway. It's a charting uh -huh. software. It's like trading view almost. Okay. Uh, so I showed him this. Uh, way many years ago, 2008, I think it was. But then in 2009, 2000, and, uh, yeah, 2009, when I graduated, you know, every, the world was on crisis. Like everything was just, everybody was just getting fired. But I managed to get a, a, a job at FXCM. Uh, and I oh. did sales for three months, even though I started economics, I wanted to be an analyst. Uh, but I managed to, my, my manager eventually told me like, look, your, your sales are rubbish. And there's a role, like an analyst role, to do research uh -huh. in Sweden, Swedish. Right. And, and that's how I entered. So I, I finally got what I wanted after three months. And, uh, and then I became an analyst. And this was yeah, in 2000. You had a very fortuitous road compared Sorry? to what a uh, very fortuitous road journey. Okay. Uh, what does that mean, fortuitous? Um, you know, uh, I would say it means uh, fortunate. Oh, fortunate. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, compared to what a lot of people have to do uh, uh, browsing the internet for trying to learn trading, et cetera. You know, I mean, you had a, you had a nice route and doors opening for you. Yeah. Anyway, my tagline is don't just count your pips, count your blessings. I've done a thousand of these and, um, you know, a lot of people have a, a much uh, tougher time yeah. uh, finding their way uh, in shark and barracuda infested waters like our I, industry you know I what agree. i mean i agree the thing is this so it's quite interesting like there was one trader at sweatbag markets the investing bank i was working for that desk yeah and he was like super experienced like they started like back in the old days you know uh like like i think they're like 50 60 now uh so they they started very young but the, the thing with him though is that he couldn't articulate exactly how he would trade he would just go on gut feeling so they didn't i didn't really pick up exactly when to buy and sell it was more like right. so, so that was the challenge and then uh, here at uh, fxcm in london i was the only analyst at the time because the daily fx team and all the other analysts were in new york primarily in dallas mm -hmm. so i didn't have the opportunity to actually no one was there to teach me the ropes uh, so who, who influenced you? Was it books or would you just say you're mainly self-taught, Alex? Uh, self-taught. I mean, I read the classics like John Murphy's uh, uh -huh. book many, many years ago. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, is that what happened was that I, I caught up in this whole thing, short-term trading, scalping, day trading. Uh -huh. yeah. And it also had to do with the fact that I had a relatively small account when I started. And at the time, this is the, before you had micro lots, uh, when you only had the mini lots. Right. Uh, so because I only wanted to risk like one and a half percent of my account per trade, I was forced to have stop loss orders of maybe 35 pip at most. And, and what happened was is that I was getting stopped at all the time. Uh, then what happened, I think when they started to introduce the, the micro lot, as well, I started to make more money. So I was putting that into my account. Uh, I was starting to become more profitable. And then just as a process of trading a lot, I realized that I made the most amount of money when we had some really nice trends on the daily chart. Right. So when we had like nice breakouts on the daily, like, you know, when, when you see all the patterns that can give you some 300 pip or 400 pip, it was on those situations where my short-term strategy would make the most amount of money. But then I realized I don't actually have to trade really short-term. I can trade slightly longer term because it's less stress on me. I yeah. just hold the positions for a few days up to a week or two. So it's less work. Uh, I just need to make sure the entry is right. Do you and walk then, away from uh, your trading platform? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, I have, I work a lot with alerts. Okay. So I just put alerts on and then I get the notification. So I can explain a little bit how things have developed. So I read, quite, uh, you can see my chart, right? Yeah. So uh, obviously, you know, I, I always looking at the daily charts. I, I always had a very good sense of trends in general. And I used to work with just simple breakouts to new daily highs and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but I started to study a bit like what Peter Brandt did um, to sort of, and that helped me to formalize things a little bit more than, than I had in the past. 
Okay. And uh, at its core, I just focus on six different patterns. I focus on the rectangle, actually three patterns, rectangle, head and shoulders, and bullish and bearish descending, well, bullish uh, ascending triangle and descending triangle, bullish okay. and bearish rectangle, and bullish and bearish in, uh, head and shoulders. So those six patterns I focus on. And I like to look at something like a six hour chart or a four hour chart. And I would look at patterns there are at least four weeks, uh, sometimes a little bit older, like a month or two. And this I, is I feel a little deja vu here. Alex, were you at our trader summit, the last one we did? Uh, no, no. I okay. Think All right. First time featuring Someone there. else that was a real classical technician like you. I can't remember who it was, but I just was getting a little deja vu here. Oh, okay, yeah. So, okay. So uh, I love this stuff. It's clean. Um, you know, no indicators and um, using a telescope instead of a microscope. You could say so, yeah. So obviously there is some there's some stuff happening in the background, of course, like correlations a lot. Yeah. Uh, so that helps to to make more sense of things. Yeah. And obviously I studied a bit of economics, but I noticed in the least a year or two that it doesn't really I don't really pay attention to it at all anymore even though like part of my work means that I have to read up on it. Like uh -huh. I do some CNBC interviews and stuff and all that. And I read up ahead of those interviews just to be able to answer some questions. And of course I have a long-term view on things, uh, but mostly it's, it's sort of technicals. And, and this would be probably the typical example where you have like a big consolidation phase, like a big rectangle to some, some extent. Have a low here from June last year, another low here from September last year, and then you have the low from December. You have the high here from November 20th, uh, from November, another high here in December. And then what we're looking at here is a classic rectangle, like sort of difference between this point and this point is 718 pips. And some of these big patterns just on their own, they're sometimes difficult to trade. But if you have like a smaller pattern like this one here, where you have a smaller rectangle, uh, yeah. then that helps a lot. So the smaller rectangle pattern is this one, and that gives you that target. So when you have those right. combinations, yeah. it, I tend to generate really good returns. Okay. Now, I'm not as patient like everybody else. Well, not everybody else. I, I think I'm- What do you mean? Uh, of sitting to a target? Yeah, I wouldn't actually push. So in the past, what I've done, is that I will try to keep the position for, for example, like this, like 718 pips. But I many times I found myself, you know, I have a very decent profit and then it goes back and I get stopped out at entry or for a small loss. And mentally, that's a bit training, you know, if you do that all the time. So what I'm doing now is I just go- Making partials? Uh, I actually, yeah, sometimes I do partials, but most of the time I just try to go out uh, relatively quickly. So- this one here, I bought this morning and I'm up with like 10 pips so far. And uh, I'm hoping I can get out here. That would be like a reward ratio of uh, 4.3 times. Actually, I'm working with tighter stop. Let me see. No, that's correct. So this is the low from yesterday evening. Uh, so uh, around the New York close. Yeah. And I bought here uh, on the breakout and okay. this early morning. And obviously, if I would get all of this, it would be a 4.3. Uh, three risk reward ratio. Am I going to keep it all the way up to that point? I'm not really sure. Maybe I'll just- When do you point. trail your stop to uh, 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 pull it up? Like if you had another 40 pips or so, maybe uh, bring it up to BE. You ever use BE stops? No. Or, because... or market stops only? No, I don't. I don't use any like sort of break even stops because what happens- is many times because we enter like in the middle of the move, yeah. uh, the price is just going to come back and touch that level. Right. I could, of course, if I wanted to, I could probably put the stop loss below the low here okay. from this session. Right. Uh, but, but you want to give it more tolerance. Exactly. I don't really worry too Let much. Let them breathe. Exactly. Give me some wiggle room. So usually I would give it a few days to the upside and then, you know, maybe get stuck here for a day or two. And then I start to reduce things. Now, this is quite interesting. So a lot of people focus on the initial reward ratio, you know, the one you look at here, which is that you can get like a, a 4.5, uh, 4.6 reward ratio. 
However, I noticed like this, if you're good at projecting the trend, what happens automatically is, is that you're gonna be able to reduce your stop loss. So most of the time I'd be able to reduce the stop loss with up to 40% of my initial risk. So if I'm risking a hundred pip, I can usually yeah. reduce it. So I'm just risking 60 pip. Okay. So what happens automatically, I can reduce the stop loss a bit. And then suddenly, if I would keep it towards target, I would get an 8.32. But as I mentioned yeah. before, I'm probably not going to keep it to target. Maybe I'm going to get out at 77. Or even if I get out at 76.50, somewhere here, I get that 4.87 times to reward ratio. Yeah. So what's quite interesting is after the fact, you know, what's the effective average loss versus the effective or the typical average win after you trade it, you know, 30, 40, 50 times. And that, uh, that is really what's interesting is the after the fact initial reward ratio. That means that sometimes one can take positions where the risk reward ratio is not necessarily optimal, at least not initially, even though it's good to have a good risk reward ratio that is good from the very beginning. Okay, so, so I this, noticed. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, Alex. please. No, please. No. Um, well, I noticed. Uh, I went to your uh, Londinium. dot com website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and it it looks like you um, you manage a fund. Uh, am I interpreting it correctly? Um, I I I do help. Uh, no, I don't manage a fund. No. Okay. No, okay. uh, is that a trading education site or because I know you're featuring some type of account on there? Yeah, so that's so a I, I, I can load that. Uh, so it's not, it's, it's just uh, what if if I would have started with $10,000 um, when I started trading with my personal account? Uh, okay. So, you, so in, in 2014. Okay. So what's kind of interesting is, well, this actually, I wasn't profitable until 2014. So in 2014, I started trading and then uh, I effectively in collecting all my trading results because I use pretty much the same account. Yeah. That in combination with a crypto account that I have. And then right. this would be the results if I would have started with 10,000. I actually had more than 10,000 at the time, but I've been moving money in and out of the account because I bought a flat in London where I live in uh, 2018 uh, but this gives an indication sort of what one could have expect uh, to some extent so what i do here is that i it's educational in a way that i share what i trade and mm -hmm. then it's obviously up to the readers if they want to use that information or not and i okay. explain to them like this is the pattern this is why i'm trading it this is why i put my stop loss here this is why i'm risking like one and a half percent of my account or one percent or two percent uh, so, so that is what I do here. I also manage this website. I created this one, which is called investingcube.com, which I'm not the owner. I'm just the, uh, I just set it up for them and manage it. And this is like a news website. And here I'm leveraging my experience from daily effects. Uh, and I also used to manage another website. So this is, we get like a quarter of a million people visiting this website every month. Uh, wow. How yeah. long ago did you uh, start that? Uh, so we got it included on Google News uh, on September 2019. So, uh, yeah, we, we're doing really good here, uh, numbers-wise. Uh, wow. And we want to beat, we, obviously, we're not going to beat FX Street anytime soon. But I do think we could hopefully beat them. I mean, I know the guys over there, so... <laughs> Yeah. I met them many times. So yeah, we want to yeah. beat them. We want to beat everybody uh, on the news, okay. on the news side of things. Right. Uh, uh -huh. It's news. This is not like trade ideas. It's, this is just news, you know? Uh, so I do this as well. And I also represent the broker ATF. I'm, you know what? I I'm already dialing Francesc right now. He's yeah. been, <laughs> he, he has been listening to this whole conversation. Buddy. <laughs> He's All not right, going to so, take it seriously, though, because I think he—he, he, huh? <laughs> I'm I'm at a quarter of a million, and yeah. Francesca, I think he's like at, uh, I think he had twenty-one and a half million users last month, not last wow. year, yeah. According to a post he did on um, on LinkedIn, yeah. maybe he'll buy me yeah. one day. He'll buy the company one day. <laughs> there you go. You have a lot of plans. 
Yeah. Alex is a man with many plans, a Renaissance man. So <laughs> you trade and you develop websites and uh, your demeanor is uh, calming. Um, yeah. You know, just having a conversation yeah. with you, Alex. So um, uh, is that the best? Uh, do you want to talk about anything else in the markets? Because, you know, yeah. we are pretty close to wrapping and, yeah. you know, I've done many of these and I could tell, I, I can tell who's a pro. Cool. I talk <laughs> to them and, and, yeah. you know, uh, we've joked around a little bit, but, you know, I already respect you. Thank you. And uh, you're now my trading warrior brother, like it or not. You can't get out of it. It's like being in the mafia. <laughs> awesome. Right? Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so, Alex, yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I hope you have a great year. Yeah. Um, and perhaps, we, you know, in the spring we could do this again and uh, see what kind of things you're looking at now. Good hunting on the pound cad trade, buddy. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, when you ever come to London or so, just hook, uh, send me a message. We'll grab something okay. to eat. Or a drink. All right, everyone. Thank Alejandro. Okay, and you could find him uh, at Alex One Hundred. Is there I, an underscore in that? Uh, no, so it's no? Alex FX zero Alex, zero. Exactly, Alex FX yeah. zero zero. Yeah, yeah. Zero and you could uh, go to his web website. It's L O N D I N I U M F X dot com londiniumfx.com exactly. thank you thank you my trading warrior brother cheers thank you good so luck. much for having me talk soon yeah good luck with the fed today thank you yeah okay. <laughs> that's a wrap <laughs> everyone I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to impact but obviously it will impact a bit they, but, yeah. the plunge protection team has to hold the s and p's over 3800 don't you think we'll see if they could uh you know step in while paul is uh begging the u.s congress to pass uh, 1.9 trillion st uh, re rescue bill. Yeah. So interesting, you know, to watch the theater, isn't it? Yeah, it's always interesting that. Uh, but I, I, I know what you mean. It's always interesting. I, I don't pay too much attention to it anymore. Though I used to pay a lot of attention to it, but not not anymore. Uh, and I don't like to trade those events either because yeah, I always get I, stopped out. But obviously, there's yeah, there's I, I don't like trading red events, and you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just looking for this one thing that I wrote uh, that was really comes from Livermore. Yeah. Um, anyway, I can't find it. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he's saying really that, you know, the name of the stocks change and everything else changes, but Wall Street will never change because human nature never changes. I agree with that a hundred percent, you know, like yeah. there is, there are some really good books. There's another one, um, one of the classics, uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, operation, uh, operate a uh, stock market operator. Here it is. All right. The pockets change, the suckers change, the stocks change, but wall street never changes because human nature never changes. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, partner. Cool. Have All a right, good guys. week, Alex. Really uh, uh, great meeting you. I'm glad our paths crossed. Uh, I'll thank Twitter for cool. that. Cool. All right, yeah, buddy. Definitely. Cool. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. All right, Cheers. everyone. That's a wrap. Good luck with the Fed later. You could, you know, um, go to a member chat if you're part of our community. Otherwise, we'll see you all tomorrow. Remember, don't just count your pips count your blessings and if you could find one thing to be grateful for it's hard to be depressed uh, i've tried it you can't be grateful and depressed simultaneously see you monica laura adios <laughs>